Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another m M&M on this beautiful afternoon. We're so delighted that you have come to be with us and to share the Word of God. And we feel honored that uh, you are here today, and, and uh, we trust that you will be blessed. I want to share a theme that I have slapped at and tiptoed around and, and dealt with in part uh, on a few other of my M&Ms, but I ran across some notes today and thought that it may be worth just de- dedicating one entire uh, ministry moment to this theme, and that is simply this. Faith is an exhaustible substance. It is an exhaustible element. Faith does not build up and never waste away. Faith is under attack every day of your life, 24-7, 365 days a year. Faith, in definition, is your reliance on or trust in the Lord, our God. And so you see, if you do not have trust in the Lord, if you do not have faith in God, then you are in trouble in your walk with God. Furthermore, you are in trouble in your walk in this world because without faith in God, the Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God, that we must come believing that He is and a reward of them that diligently seek Him. The fact of the matter is we can receive nothing of God without faith. Because we are taking, going from the physical realm to the spiritual realm, faith is our is our connection to the spiritual realm. So you see, faith is imperative. Faith is critical, uh, both in our own spiritual life and our salvation, as well in as in our hope for abundant life in this present world that God has allowed us to be birthed in. And so, looking at that, <clears throat> I looked through Scripture and I found several references of people and of their faith. I read about uh, the man by the name of Asaph. Sometimes this psalm is attributed to David, but that would be incorrect. It's actually Asaph. It's the 73rd psalm, and uh, Asaph said this, But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped, for I was envious of the, at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. As you can see, Asaph was saying, my faith was just about used up. My faith was nigh to being gone. It was almost non-existent. But then you find that later on in that same chapter, The 73rd Psalm, verse 17, it says this, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Basically what Asaph is telling us here is that my faith was gone, my faith was depleted, uh, my faith uh, had exhausted itself until I went to church and got into the presence of God, and then my faith was built up and I saw things more clearly. You know, faith is not a matter of whether you're religious or Christian or a follower of Christ or not. You look at the disciples in the uh, eighth chapter of the book of Matthew. There, uh, the Lord Jesus sent them out on the Sea of Galilee to go to the other side, and he fell asleep in the boat while they rowed. You know the storm arose. You know the story of how how ultimately they woke Jesus and and uh, said, Master, don't you care that we're about to perish? Jesus stood there at the bow of the boat and said, Peace, be still. And of course, the wind and the waves, they ceased. But Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples then and made this statement. Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? These were people that had been followers of Christ. These were men that had heard the ministry of the Lord Jesus, seen him feed the 5,000, seen him break bread and and uh, do the impossible with it, seen him open the blinded eyes and raise the dead. But yet some reason or another 
on that day, their faith was not up to the challenge of nature, and nature depleted them of faith. We need to have faith. We need to be careful and to watch over our faith. And interestingly enough, I find another reference to uh, faith in the book of Matthew in chapter 15, where there was a Syrophoenician woman who came to the Lord and sought the Lord Jesus that he would touch or heal her daughter. She came crying and said, I am and uh, asking the Lord to intervene in her behalf. And Jesus said, I'm not come to but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not sent to the Gentiles yet. My ministry is not to the Gentiles. It's to the Israelites. And and she said, Lord, help me. He says, it's not right for me to give the children's meat to the dogs. And, and again, she insisted and said, it is true, Lord, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus made this statement in the 28th verse there, Matthew 15. O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. That woman had faith. She, she was not a follower of Jesus per se. She was not known to be one in a way. She was not a Jew. She, and uh, therein was uh, very unlikely even uh, a worshiper of the, at the temple uh, the Jehovah God that they worshiped there at the temple. But yet this woman had great faith and her faith was strong even in the face of adversity. And she feel, refused to surrender her faith and to give up. The Bible tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. There in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17. We need to be careful. We need to be cognizant to keep our faith uh, vessels full. We need to make sure that our faith has not uh, run out, that our faith has not our faith supply has not depleted. We need to study the Word of God. We need to read the Word of God. We need to be in the house of the Lord in so much as we are able to, uh, that our faith might be strong and that our vessels might be full of faith. I'm reminded of another guy, and here's a really interesting story about faith again. His name was Elijah. There on Mount Carmel, his faith was at the top of its pinnacle of, of strength and potential. He uh, called down fire from heaven. Great faith that man had in that day. He turned around and killed untold hundreds of of uh, priests of Baal and and prophets and so forth that of uh, the the gods of uh, the Gentiles, but after all of this was done, a little woman, one woman by the name of Jezebel, said, "I am going to kill you, and uh, there ain't nothing you can do to save yourself, but uh, you're going to be just like the prophets of Baal that you slew of mine." And all of a sudden, you look at that story. And though it does not say it emphatically, you can denote that Elijah's faith went from hundred to zero. And the next thing you know, he's running for his life, asking the Lord to slay him because uh, of his despair. We need to be cognizant to keep our self charged and full of faith. I want to close with this verse of scripture that's found in Jude chapter 20. But ye beloved building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. What am I trying to say to you today? is very simply this. Faith is an exhaustible substance. It is an exhaustible quality. It is something that will dissipate if it is not maintained. And in the face of adversity, like Elijah had, faith can, can, uh, can dissipate more rapidly. Uh, some would even suggest that Eve uh, lost her faith in the Word of God through the temptation of Satan there in the garden. Watch over your faith. Make sure that your faith detector is 
online. I was walking through the hallway today and I looked up at the ceiling and I noticed that we have a smoke detector. And I thought to myself, I wonder if the batteries are good in that smoke detector. I haven't checked them in a while and certainly haven't heard it going off. And uh, I thought to go get the broom handle and, and poke it to see if it would squawk at me. I didn't. But in the same wise, sometimes we need to get the broom and just kind of push our faith indicator. Make sure that our faith is on charge. Make sure that we're on top of our game. Because the devil's coming after your faith. The world will dissipate it as, as an aid to this world and the God of this world. But you... Beloved, build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. God bless you today. Delighted that you came to be with me again for a ministry moment. I trust that you will uh, continue to uh, click the like button and the share button to let us know that you're out there in the uh, uh, electronic world, if you will. Look us up on our webpage on our Facebook page. Uh, look us up on uh, YouTube where this video will also be posted. Look up my wife and the post that she makes on podcasts uh, at uh, Breadcrumbs Podcast. All of these we provide and all of these we do uh, so that you might be blessed, edified, and have your faith built on a daily basis. God bless you. Be with us again next week. And we look forward to that too. Until such time, be well.